We are at the Worthington Diamond Mine on a cool but sunny January morning. It's January 9th, 2021. And the winter ryegrass we planted is green. It's up and it's growing well, partly because we fertilized it. Uh, I want to look around a little this morning and I tell you I also plan to start archery hunting this evening. Modern gun season for white-tailed deer is over, but now I can start hunting with my crossbow. I used to have my deer feeder set up here, and I shot two doe with modern gun from our guard shack slash hunting deer stand all the way from there over to here with a 30 6 with a scope but a crossbow won't shoot as far accurately so I moved the deer feeder over to this it's on this post right in front of our guard shack camper slash hunting uh, deer stand it's on that post we'll get a closer look in a minute but that's full of corn and they eat about 20 pounds of corn per evening or at night they come in i want to show you they they also eat this winter rye grass they love it and you can't tell they've been eating just by looking at it until you consider this wire cage i sat around it so that i would know how much the winter rye is growing without the deer eating it so the deer can't eat inside that wire cage and that gives you an idea how much of this winter rye grass they've eaten down because the grass in the cage is much taller than the rest of this. So they're pretty well mowing the field by eating it and not only do the deer like to eat it but also the wild turkeys in the area like to eat this winter rye grass. Fresh greens in the winter time. Speaking of greens, we also planted some turnip seeds here as well. And these are turnips growing. If you can see those purple top, those are purple top turnips. And some are coming up. And the deer like to eat purple top turnips as well. And if we wanted, we could dig that up, cook them, and eat them ourselves. Eat the, the root and let the deer eat the tops. It's so pretty and I want to walk around and look a little bit. This is actually the exposed lamprite. We remove the overburden and this huge peninsula here <clears throat> is all volcanic lamprite. It's a hard rock and I have to break it up with an excavator to be able to load it into the plant. We have a ladder here I can use to get down to the other side and let's go into the pit and look around we might do a little surface searching this morning we had <clears throat> a four inch rain and a couple of days later a three inch rain so we have had a lot of wash water washing this diamond search area in the last week seven inches of rain now this is all lamprite on this side where I'm standing is lamprite that we've excavated to either box up and sell or uh, run through our diamond recovery plant. Uh, if you want to look at this wall over here, I left about a foot of lamprite because it's a hard solid rock and I wanted the, this wall to stay intact so that when it rained it wouldn't wash clay over and contaminate. Uh, the deer have gotten down in here. This is a doe track going through here. It's not a real large one, but a white tail doe went through here. This is our contact zone. On the left is solid lamprite rock holding back this more or less retaining wall, keeping all of this overburden and clay from washing into our lamprite and contaminating it the contact zone see where this gravel is and then kind of a brown streak going down 
that's where the clay begins and everything on the right over here is clay and it's worthless it would not have diamonds in it that is a sedimentary uh, deposit and over here on the left is an igneous or volcanic deposit and it's funnel shaped so this is the side of the funnel that you're looking at and it was bedded in here if you saw the other video it's bedded on at about a 65 or 70 degree angle so almost straight up and down but here's the contact zone between the sedimentary clay on the right and the lamperite on the left let's take a look at the deposit and keep your eye open for diamonds of course we had a frost this morning so you might see something sparkle that will soon disappear and not actually be a diamond but uh, be frost instead <clears throat> so there was three feet of clay overburden on top of this and it's been removed and then we hit a layer of this black and this is a limonite slash gothite deposit it's a purplish black gothite limonite has iron and manganese in it and below the iron and manganese is the solid lamperite brescia that is diamondiferous yes we have found diamonds in it every now and then see this isn't real flat sometimes there will be rocks you know cobbles uh, sitting on that uh, filling those pockets like here here's a piece that's just naturally sitting on top and here's another jasper uh, this is solid igneous volcanic brescia lamperite and the reason i say brescia means the clasps or inclusions in the material is angular and this is a piece this reddish here is trinity clay that came from hundreds of feet deep and when the volcano came up it broke through this hard hard trinity clay layer and trinity clay here is red in places and green in places so if you find red and green clasps in a uh, lamprite chunks that maybe if you order a box from us uh, <clears throat> that is the clay and that worked to help cool the volcanic material and you want it to cool quickly so your diamonds don't resorb out this is another specimen of the gothite uh, limonite iron and manganese layer so that layer continues on across here here's a chunk of volcanic rock from right off the top it just rolled rolled down here it has not been broken up so this is an example of what this deposit looks like before the excavator hits it and it is solid hard chunk of igneous rock that has diamonds in it because it came up from more than a hundred miles deep and with it it brought red pyrope garnet as well as diamonds white yellow and brown just like at the crater of diamonds it's, uh, nearby it also has a uh, shiny black lustrous chromium spinel and bright grass green chromium diopside so all three diamond indicator minerals have been found in this along with diamonds so <clears throat> let's go up on top of the pit and look for a minute this is all lamperite and it's been rained on as i said we've had seven inches of rain we've got some deer track and some raccoon tracks in here as well so people have not been surface searching this so we're the first ones to take a look at it uh animals have been surface searching in here a little it looks like they walk through here so they came up from the lower pit there which is probably five feet lower they climbed this steep incline and walked across here and continued on across you can see all the deer tracks those are doe tracks and then <clears throat> there's a track down there and they've jumped across and they've gone up to the corn feeder i've got other food for them as well <clears throat> 
Well, things are kind of damp from this morning's hard frost. It got down to 26 degrees last night. That was the temperature I saw when I got up this morning. But it's going to warm up to almost 50 degrees with this sunshine out here. Uh, let's turn around. I mean, there's a lot of material here. I measured it, and it's like 62 feet by 66 feet what we have exposed now, and then it goes down just indefinitely. Uh, I don't know, over near here, they core drilled down 200 feet in lamperite, so there's a lot of material. These blocks are to keep my uh, dump truck from going on down into the pit when I back up to load. The excavator will sit here. We have a pond on down there for drainage. That ditch was cut in there intentionally to drain this pit so we don't have it standing water in it that we'd have to pump. But uh, the dump truck would sit here and it would come down this haul road that was recently graveled with red clay gravel that was haul hauled in from the Highland Center Point area near Still Meadows if you know where that is. <clears throat> Looks like the animals have enjoyed crossing through here. Uh, they've got a lot of tracks. This is a good path for them. You can see a few straight off of the path and left deer tracks here. These are doe tracks, white tail female deer. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. So we've got it all here and I won't sing the rest of the song for you. But look at all the tracks around. This is our corn feeder. They can, as they eat this out, more corn falls down from the pipe above and I fill it here every day about 20 pounds <clears throat> of uh, field corn or deer corn. I also cut the bottom out of a peanut butter jar and screwed it to the post and then I can uh, the deer can come up and feed and the bottom I cut off is is right here and they'll they'll eat all that peanut butter as well. Uh, we have other treats for them. They love rice bran, and that's what this brown powder is. Rice is a big crop for Arkansas. They grow a lot of rice in the Mississippi River Delta. The orange here is a persimmon salt and mineral block. And <clears throat> it used to be a solid brick, and the deer have just broken it up and crunched on it and eaten it. I thought they would lick it. They ended up, you know biting and eating it so we've got deer tracks all around here and some lead away in this direction this is a doe as well a, a female white-tailed deer we'll follow the tracks over here some as we investigate and you think wow is the only thing here uh, does I shot two does during modern gun season I am a doe slayer we have them in the in the freezer now but where there are does there are also bucks and this is a buck track do you see the extra two holes in the back here that looks like a doe that tells you it's a buck that walk there and of course he didn't leave just one track here's a deep buck track so by the weight and the size he's a fairly big boy and this is another big buck track as well. So he walked through here. Uh, even the, the bucks have to eat. So he came in and had some food just like the does. Some of these tracks we're looking at are doe tracks. These are does through here. But um, a buck walked through here as well. So we can tell by looking at his tracks. The... All this area that's green, the ground magnetic survey and aerial mag survey indicates that there is lamperite under all of this green area here. So we do plan to excavate that as we need to. We didn't right now because this deposit that is currently exposed is plenty to work for a long time yet. And 
there was more overburden over here to the right than there was over here so we uncovered the part with the least amount of overburden now uh, let's swing around and I'll show you where I'm going to be hunting this evening I got it pretty comfy inside this camper guard shack so I put a barrel and a <clears throat> piece of plywood across here and set it on this ledge and then covered it with this uh, camo so the deer don't see my legs and I have the crossbow sitting on it and I put a couple of blocks of wood here to hold up another piece of plywood that I then put a box on that I could cover with camo so I can sit back there in comfort on the couch and wait for the deer the crossbow is not cocked and loaded yet because I wouldn't be comfortable standing here with a deadly weapon pointed at me that was uh, cocked and ready to go but it will sling an arrow really fast when you pull the trigger I say arrow because that's what most people call this actually it is a bolt a crossbow bolt say as he said crossbow it's carbon so it doesn't bow and uh, a bowed arrow won't go straight but that tip on there has three razor blades and it goes right through a deer when you shoot them unless you hit a bone it will go clear through the deer and they'll probably be standing right out here this evening they'll come to eat and I'll be able to uh, harpoon them with the crossbow bolt and they won't see me because I will be sitting behind the camo so we'll get a, a view of what the deer would see if they looked over at me so I'll stand here where they would be eating and there is the view they would have they could see a, a crossbow and camo and that's about all they would see so all I have to do is pull a trigger and it the cocked crossbow that's loaded with this bolt will um, shoot that projectile over here and all the way through the deer so anyway I'm looking forward to starting archery season this evening it's been archery season well <laughs> since October but I preferred to go modern gun during the modern gun season but now that that is closed archery continues till the end of February so February 28th is my last day for archery hunting but between now and then maybe I can get another doe or two and maybe even a buck for the freezer so we're all about storing up meat for the future for the year ahead and uh, things are looking pretty good here at the Worthington Diamond Mine thank you for joining me for a look at it this morning and uh, it's a, a peaceful pretty morning and we're all set up for archery deer hunting thanks for joining me